go. Oh! Big Brown. Oh, Big Brown. Ate the beetle. A little bit of a microburst. Nice. A yumper. Every angler has a favorite time of the year to chase fish with a fly. Whether it be during the blossoming spring, during the green of summer, the colors of autumn, or during the cleansing white of winter. It merely offers a backdrop to a pursuit that has attached itself to the soul of a fly fisherman. Rod, reel, fly, and fish. Oh, there's a big fish. Oh, big fish. There we go. Big fish. <laughs> Under that log, behind that rock, or deep in the dark blue could lie the fish of a lifetime. It's in that helpless hope that the angler will march from year to year through a lifetime, hoping the next cast connects dreams and a fish of legend. Welcome to Seasons on the Fly. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Big fish, big fish. Follow him. Wow. Big fish. Welcome to Seasons on the Fly. I'm Greg Heister, and what a great show this week. We've got browns and rainbows, some rain, a lot of sun, even some hail, and a river that knows little envy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Seasons on the Fly, and welcome to Utah's Green River. Appreciate it right there, got him. The American West, arguably the greatest trout habitat on the globe. So many rivers, so many options, and so many fish. You see it, Dano? What do you think it is? It's brown trout. And of course, so little time. In the northeast corner of Utah lies a river that knows no envy. The Green River, here near Flaming Gorge Reservoir, is one of the best tailwater trout fisheries in the world, period. And look around, I mean, look at just the, the unbelievable nature of this river canyon and all of that red rock and that deep canyon and the bright greens along its bank. I don't know if there's a more beautiful place that we have in this entire country to catch trout than Utah's Green River. When you gaze at this river and its cratered canyon, you might find yourself overstimulated. There might be more fish per mile in this section of the green than any section on any river in the world. There he is, great, good ball. He ate the beetle. When you take a look from above, its beauty is both breathtaking and hard to forget. Well, there's not a day that goes by where we don't get to see something cool. Moose and deer, mountain lions, elk, bighorn sheep, uh, all on one float some days but there's not too many places where you can go and see that kind of wildlife. Um, I think it's because there's no development on the river. So you have miles and miles of beautiful terrain and no houses or roads or railroads. So these animals feel like they're at home, you know, we're in their backyard. So uh, every once in a while, they let us take a look at them. What's up, Dad? Along for the float, Joe Heister, dad. You first met him in Belize when he was catching his first bonefish and snook. He's more at home chasing trout. Let me know when you want me to lift him. I couldn't stop looking at the mountains. I miss fish because I was looking up at the, at the side of the cliffs and stuff. It's just gorgeous. Right. He's been trout fishing with a fly rod since he was a boy. Growing up in western New York, fishing the Osable and Beaverkill rivers, famous in their own rights, but the Green is different. Well, I've always heard about uh, the Green River and how good the fishing was, how many fish there was, but I didn't envision it being in a lush valley like this. I mean, it's gorgeous. You can just come here for the scenery and ride down, which a lot of people do. They ride down the river on a raft just to look at it. I mean, it's, it's worth the trip. Grizzled, comedic, and a pro, Dan O. Bolton and his life on the green when Seasons on the Fly continues and the dinosaurs that occupied this red rock.
Greg Heister here. Find out the truth about chronic Lyme disease. Go to seasonsonthefly.com. Seasons on the Fly brought to you by Loop. Join the Loop Army and help take North America by storm. And by the Restigouche River Lodge. Come fish the land of the giants. Hi there. Don't let the Seasons on the Fly experience end when the show does. Go to the brand new seasonsonthefly.com and watch fly tying demonstrations, a few full episodes, and be sure to pick up a hat or season one on DVD and support the show. And remember, we've got a Facebook page. Go there, click like, and stay in touch with us. I really appreciate you supporting the show, and I hope to see you on the river sometime. Seasons on the Fly is brought to you by Yeti Coolers. Built for the wild. And by Honda, power when and where you need it. The Green River is 730 miles long, cutting through Wyoming, Colorado, and here in Utah. Yeah. Most of it is in Utah, and it's 6,000 feet above sea level here at Flaming Gorge Dam. Take your time, Joe. A lot of those other places, they don't have the combination of scenery and fishing that we have along in, in combination with no houses or roads right next to the river. It's just wild and scenic and just beautiful. Oh, gorgeous. Some of the best. Uh, I fish with a lot of people that fish all over the West, and this is where they always come back to. He's on the pheasant tail. These trout here are just gorgeous. I, uh, I haven't done a lot of it lately, so I struggle a little bit getting back into casting. Uh, they're challenging. They fight like the devil, and they're, they really average a nice, fat fish. There's a lot of feed here for them, a lot of fly life. It's, it's just a tremendous experience. Fly fishing in the Heister family is really rooted in trout fishing. So to get him to one of the great rivers in the American West and have it chronicled in a television show and to get him here, you can still see those skills after all of those years now in his 70s. He's able to present that fly right, get him on a dry fly. He was able to nymph some up. Uh, it's great to have him here and uh, what a great time it was this week on the Green River in Utah with him. This area was inhabited by many nomadic cultures dating back to as early as 600 AD. But it wasn't until 1869 when John Wesley Powell floated the entire drainage, surveying and mapping this river. I believe it's all petrified sandstone. So it's been around for a long, long time. And that river has cut through that sandstone to create that canyon. Oh, Greg. Good going, but John Wesley Powell saw that same same stuff when he came through. That was a spectacular thing. That was awesome. The Indians saw it when they were here. This river would be dammed in 1956. The Flaming Gorge Dam was finished in 1963. Dan Bolton, Dano, grew up in western wow. Pennsylvania, moved west to ski and to fish and now has spent a few decades on the green. Boy, is he a fatty, huh? Wow. I never heard of the Green River, so I had to come and check it out. When I got here, I fell in love with it. So I decided it was time to hang a shingle and stay for a while. Beautiful. Look at that pig. Bang. Great job, guys. You're off to a good start. Today, this Tailwater River has fish populations for 20 miles or more that are said to be somewhere between 10 and 20,000 trout per mile, browns and rainbows. Simply, there are a lot of fish here. Bugs are starting. The biologist says that there's 15,000 fish on average per mile. There's one. Good one, Greg. Cool. I believe that's on the A and the B section. Um, up under the dam, there's, they can't fit any more fish in there. Back in the old days, there used to be 20,000 a mile. They used to stock a lot more back then, so there was plenty of fish. 
But now that's sort of a wild reproducing, things are working, so they don't need to put all the fish in anymore. Brown trout, yes. I mean, we saw them today. All right. They're pretty healthy. What separates this river from many of the large tailwaters in the American West is the biomass. It's diverse and prolific. And because of that, dry fly fishing can be epic here. It's a bottom release dam, so this water remains cold all year. And a hatch of blue wing olives can happen any month of the summer. But terrestrials and big flies imitating cicadas, hoppers, and beetles can be deadly as well. And that's the Green River for you. Uh, not everywhere you go can you have opportunities on a dry fly every day. Uh, unfortunately, this place can humble you as a fisherman, so if you're not the best caster or can't put that fly where you need it, sometimes the dry fly fishing is a little tough. So you have to resort oh, nice. to nymphing. Pretty brown. Good job, Dad. Thank you. Right out of the gates. Yeah, that was fun. That's the most exciting thing in the world to me. Maybe not to everybody, but to me. And th then you anticipate hooking them, and now you're all excited and you're casting. And, you know, that's. It's just like deer hunting. When you see a nice buck walking up, you got to make sure you don't choke. When things do slow down, you can always go to the strike indicator and nymph fish all day long, literally. Trout live in beautiful places, Greg, and this is one of the best, that's for sure. When seasons on the fly continues, the fish even eat during a torrential storm. He ate it. Oh, oh my God. And Jurassic visions on the green. Hi there. Go to SeasonsOnTheFly.com and support our sponsors. Without them, this show is impossible. Find their logo, click on it, go to their website and buy their product. Let them know that you learned about them through our show. And thank you for watching Seasons on the Fly. Seasons on the Fly brought to you by Whitetail Country Sports World, where the great outdoors is always in. And by Tarpon Key Lodge in Belize, Catch a Grand Slam before breakfast. Seasons on the Fly is brought to you by Northwest, Southwest, Eastern, and American Fly Fishing Magazines, the best mags in the business. And by SeasonsOnTheFly.com. Don't let the experience end when the show does. And by the brand new Seasons on the Fly Lodge, the SOF experience continues on Alaska's Quijack River. Yeah. Beautiful. Good heavy fish, Woo. huh? <laughs> Way to go. Boy, he's a nice heavy one. Holy freaky. <laughs> All right. All right. Bam! Beautiful. Good heavy fish, Woo. huh? The Green River in northeast Utah, this canyon of red rock is petrified sandstone. The water has carved its way through this canyon and has left steep, rugged walls, perches for birds, mammals, and at one time, dinosaurs. Yes, dinosaurs. Northeast Utah is known for its Jurassic era preservation. Many skeletal and fossil remains in museums around the world come from this area. We're right here. They were all over through here. So most of the dinosaurs that you see in museums um, all over the world come from right here in eastern Utah. Yep, they roamed around doing exactly what we were doing, right, taking it all in. Beauties. Way to go, Dano. This river travels through the Uinta Mountains. They're big enough to create or facilitate weather changes. And on the green, it can happen in moments. Wow. A little bit of a microburst. Yeah, a little bit of hail. You know, just things that really make it worthwhile on the river. <laughs> yeah. There he is. He ate it. Oh, oh my oh. God. This good, country good, is good, uh, good. is huge. I mean, it's look. You can look out here for miles, and not see anybody or anything. But as you can see, it doesn't slow down their appetites. It was actually torrential, and it chilled the air. We had everything on the Green River. 
You know, we had the, this great sunshine. We had 40 mile an hour gusts, it seems like. We had a great rainstorm. Some hail came down. There he goes. Let it go, Dano. Good job. But we caught fish through it all, whether the sun was up, whether it was raining, post storm. Uh, this river just kept producing all day long. We just kept catching fish. Way to go. And I'll bet you 80 to 85% of the fish we caught were all on dry flies. Joe kept casting it, working those flies. The rain would stop and the fish would continue. It's a river that can spoil an angler, give someone the wrong sense that it should always be nice like Nice job. This. Pretty cool. It was really nice to meet your dad. Fish on, Dad. Nice, a yumper. He did good out there. He yeah, worked yeah. hard. Oh yeah, he knows where to put that fly, that's for sure. Getting dad to the, uh, the Green River. I've gotten him to the Missouri, I've gotten him to the Bighorn River, two other legendary spots, trail waters. Way to go, Dano. Dad, way to go. But the Green River, he'd never been really to Utah, been through Salt Lake City, had never fished anywhere here. And so it was great to get him here. You know, he grew up trout fishing. This is where it all began for our family, uh, throwing flies to rising trout in Western New York and the, the Catskill Mountains. And so this is a, a great opportunity to get him out here. Oh, big brown. Big brown. Ate the beetle. He's taught me a lot lately. I used to teach him, now he teaches me, so the worm has turned. But that, I think it's wonderful that he took up uh, with such a passion, this sport. And he's a great fly tire. And of course, he does this for his business now. It's a lot of his business is fishing. And I think that's wonderful. He keeps me going. Now it's working. Finally. Now they're eating, huh? <laughs> I will fish for one more hour. There you go, Dano. It's going to turn on. I know. <laughs> I know. It's Disneyland in a way, but it's quite a place just to sit down and enjoy a day as well. This might be the most gorgeous river in America. Seasons on the Fly is back after this. Seasons on the Fly brought to you by Dry Fly handcrafted spirits made in the Pacific Northwest, and by Wild Alaska Sport Fishing and Cruises. Come find the real Alaska. <gasps> Seasons on the Fly is brought to you by GoPro, be a hero. And by Dr. Dan's, support Seasons on the Fly, use promo code on the fly, and shipping is free. The best sunscreen and lip balm in the business. Go to drdanslipbalm.com. I'm lucky. I've been able to fish many rivers in this country with my dad. He taught me to do this decades ago, and today they are still the grandest of days. The Green River is a place that will invade and attach to your answers of why. Why you fish, why you live, and why it's important to see new rivers. If you haven't been to the green, it's time. And make sure you share the day with someone. This canyon whispers of days of nomads, exploration, and dinosaurs. Oh! Oh, oh yeah. He's going crazy though. I can't. Just don't be surprised if you find Disneyland <laughs> when you get here. <laughs> You can do everything here. You can fish streamers, you can nymph it all day. There's great dry fly opportunities. We didn't get the cicada done this trip, but you know, it's got a legendary hatch of the cicadas, these big black, almost June bug looking flies. There's a lot to do here. I'm Greg Heister. I'll see you next time on Seasons on the Fly. Beautiful fish. It has a plethora of experiences for a fly fisherman. It, it absolutely has to be one of those places that you get on the list that you've got to get here. You know, we've shot shows on the Missouri, we've shot shows on the Bighorn River in, in Montana, two great tailwaters. This is as good as it gets. The Green River is as good as it gets. What a great fishery. What great fish. 
You saw the size of a big rainbows, big brown trout, eating dry flies. You can nymph them if you want. This is a great place you gotta come. I do, I, you know, I, th I think it's one of the best dry fly fisheries I've ever encountered. And, uh, you know, if the dries aren't happening, there's other methods that you can use that are very effective. And either way, you're gonna, you're gonna do well. You first see that canyon floating down through there, it's hard to get people to focus on the task at hand, which typically is uh, trying to catch those wily fish. But once they calm down and realize they're gonna have seven or eight miles of this beauty, they, they can focus a little bit better. But it's, it's pretty amazing. His head's still down. Perfect. It's, it's a great experience. Big water, uh, it, it's uh, a unique experience for me to fish this. And I fish some of the other great rivers, the Missouris, the Bighorns, and stuff like that, the Madison. I actually kind of prefer this river over all of those I just mentioned. One more down. 